I am going to give you time to work on that homework that I said that is due on Friday. So I'm going to give you some time today, about 10, 15, 20 minutes to kind of work, kind of that time frame. I only got two problems I really want to go through today. I want to go through one, which is on your homework, so I'll give you kind of a freebie, uh, which is an example of tangent. Somebody um, came in this morning and asked, it was a really great question, it was something I didn't even think about, we didn't discuss it the other day, and it, and it made sense why they had a question on it. Um, so I'll do an example of tangent, and then I'm going to introduce today, just introduce one problem, not, I'm not going to do multiple ones, I'm just going to do one where I introduce cosecant for the first time as a graph. We haven't done that type before. So that's that's what we're gonna um, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Okay. All right. So does that make sense? What we're gonna do? Okay. Now tomorrow we'll introduce secant, and then Friday, um, obviously what we're to do that'll be where we get our last assignment of the week, where we're gonna uh, we'll have a couple problems on the secant cosecant. Um, and I mean, once we get there, I think you'll be familiar. We've done enough of these rules where I think you're kind of you should be familiar. Um, remember, next week uh, we'll work on practice tests a couple days. We'll have a test um, over a two day period where uh, tests I have tentatively set kind of middle of the week, Wednesday, Thursday kind of time frame. Um, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm feeling that we're going to do. Um, uh, and then remember, uh, I said, I think it was Monday this week, uh, MAPS testing is coming up, I think, the 27th of February, which is, it was two weeks from Monday, which is now a week from this coming month. So, just kind of keep that in mind. I, I want you to know your time scale kind of where at. So, but again, chapter four test, middle of next week. And then we'll go right into chapter five. Um, the good thing is about what we're covering, some of the stuff is on the maps test, like a lot of it is. The only thing we probably won't be covering that you'll probably want, um, tree identities, and maybe logarithms, and that's something that we eventually get into. It's like after chapter five. So, um, so that kind of gives you a time frame. Okay, well let's jump in, let's talk about this, this, this one particular example of tangent that I want to cover. Um, so here's the example that somebody brought in this morning, it was a great question, it was tangent of x minus pi. And it was just, it was a good question just because it, we talked about, you know, shifting right and left, but they got confused on when you shift, where do you start? And that's a great question for this one, because this one is different, right? When we did sine and cosine, or on the homework where you cotangent and stuff, when you shift it, that's where the starting point is. But on tangent, it's not. When you shift on tangent, like tangent graph, normally it looks like this, right? Where you have two over here, two over here, and these are the asymptotes. And tangent graph kind of looks like this, where you're hitting the amp amplitude numbers at these certain markers. The middle, when you shift, it actually moves the middle. So it's not like the starting point is the middle of the graph that you're actually moving on tangent. Does that make sense? That's different than all the rest of them. Because all the rest of them, you know, zero, zero is the starting point. You know, if you did sine, it looks like that, and that was the starting point of sine. On cosine, you're up here, right? Um, and then cotangent, you know, it's something like that, where, you know, this is like the starting point. But on tangent, it's not. It's the middle of the graph. And that's why it's... That's why I want you to. Um, that's why I want you to know how to do this particular problem. I think this is one of your homework problems, by the way. I just don't know which number it was because that, that was the question I had this morning. Okay, so let's actually talk about how how we move it. We set that equal to zero, and then you would you would add the pi across, so your answer would be you know x is pi. That would be the new middle of your graph. So we're going to be over here at pi. So I know for a fact that we're going to have a couple markers going that way. We know that. The problem is, I don't know where these markers are going to be yet anyway. They could be, both of them could be here. One could be here. Maybe one's across the across the, uh, the y-axis. Maybe it's right on the y-axis. So I'm, I'm tentative where to put these, these two markers. So maybe they're both over here. We'll see kind of the spacing. But this is the middle of the graph. So if, if I'm going to like hypothetically like think about what tangent looks like, it looks something like this. That's what it tentatively looks like, where it's passing right through that middle point. Okay, so does everyone understand how the shifting works? Now, let's let's figure out how to figure out those four hash marks. The amplitude number was not affected. We still we know we're still going to hit one and negative one, right? Because there's no number out in front of tangent. So we know those are the amplitude numbers. Now, to figure out the spacing, what is tangent length? 
tangent normally go all the way across? Like, what is the period length? Pi. Pi, right? That's, that's the full distance across. That's one picture, it's one cycle, whatever you want to call it. It's one period length of tangent, right? But for tangent, we split this, that's the full distance all the way across, we split it up to half and half. So that's, that's how we figure out what the markers are. We go half this direction, half this direction. So we cut this number in half, because there's no number in front of the x, so I don't need to worry about that. So um, half of pi is pi over 2. That's what you're going to add to find this marker over here. You're going to add a pi over 2 to find that fourth marker. To find this marker, really, all you're adding is a pi over 4, because I split that one in half. You know, it's half the distance. Okay, or, another way to think of this, just add pi over 4, add pi over 4. That's how you do it. Because I could add the two smaller ones together, or just add pi over 2. Now, how do I go the other direction? Yeah, you subtract. So you subtract pi over 4, subtract pi over 2, or the other way to think of it, just subtract pi over 4, subtract pi over 4 again. So, I can actually, I can actually tell you that right now, by looking at what we're going to be subtracting, are we going to go past the y-axis? No. The reason why, this number is too big. We're subtracting smaller numbers. So we know that this distance from here to here is pi. We're not going to go all the way across pi. We're actually doing almost half of it. So that, that kind of gives me an idea where the marker should be. Okay, any questions with what we're going to be doing for the markers? Like how I'm going to find them? I'm actually going to put the math over here so you can actually see what my marks are. It's um, so to find, I'm going to go with this direction first. So let's add a pi over four. So right now, bless you, we're at pi. We're going to add a pi over four to it to find this first marker on the right side. So when we add that, what do we need? Common denominator. So we're going to put a four over four here. So when we add, what do you get? Five over four. Yeah, five pi over four. That's this marker. So far, so good. Um, now, I don't care how you want to do it. Um, I'm just going to add a pi over 4 again. I think that's probably the easiest just to add the smaller one again to find it. So right now we're at 5 pi over 4. Let's add a pi over 4 again. Because we'll add the smaller one to find the next marker. And what do we get? 6 pi over 4. 6 pi over 4, which does simplify. That actually simplifies to be 3 pi over 2. Right? They both have 2's in common. And that would be this marker here. If you actually simplify the fraction. In fact, looking at that number, that actually justifies what I actually said earlier. Like, you could add the smaller one, pi over 4, twice. Or, I could have started with, you know, the pi, and added a pi over 2 to it. To go from <coughs> here, to go to the, the, the farthest, <coughs> point, add a pi over 2. Because if, if you actually add, you find common denominators, and guess what that top add up to be? 3 pi over 2. So it actually justifies, no matter how I did it. But don't you need that little mark? The middle mark, this one? No, like if you added pi over 2 to that, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I st so I, I still needed to add the pi over 4, but okay. I could have also found the fourth marker by just, or this last marker by just adding pi over 2 instead okay. of adding pi over 4 twice. So it didn't matter how you approached it. But it still turned out to be the same number. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. You do need a marker between them. So I think it's easier to just add the smaller one. All right, now going the other direction. We're taking the pi, and now we're subtracting the pi over 4. So we have to get common denominators, so what do you get? 3 pi over 4. Yeah, you get 3 pi over 4, that's this marker. 3 pi over 4. And yeah, um, and yeah, you're right, because we're at 3 pi over 4, and we're going to subtract another pi over 4 if you want to do it that way. And you're right, it's 2 pi over 4, which simplifies to be? Pi over 2. Pi over 2. And, which makes sense. You took pi, and you subtracted half of it. So there's your marker. Hopefully that made sense to you, like how I did it. And now we're going to um, draw the asymptotes in there. So the asymptotes are on the outside markers. So it works for tangent and cotangent. Um, tangent's going to start in the upper right corner. Starts up here. Hits the first marker at the amplitude. Goes to origin. Hits the next amplitude at the next marker and then goes to negative infinity. Sorry. Can we get the memory of those? What do you mean? Like the path that they all take? Well, you have to draw them correctly. So you have to go to the board for testing? Mm -hmm. You will have to know kind of roughly how to draw. Yep. The only thing I'll probably have on the board, maybe special triangles, positive, positive, positive negative center. 
be probably about it. One more time, what do you say? Special triangles and targets may be prepared on the play. On test day? That's the only thing you'll have. So. Okay. All right, questions on the graph of this one? By the way, I think that was homework wrong. I just don't know what number it was. Okay, all right, let's move on. Last example of the day, um, we're going to talk about cosecant. I want to introduce how we do it. Um, I'm, the way I'm going to teach you is hopefully, pray, is the easiest way you'll ever see it. The easiest way to approach it, to draw it. So you don't have to like, be overwhelmed by it. Hopefully it makes sense when you see it. Like so far up to this point, these have been difficult. I know they have. Right? Sine's difficult, cosine's difficult, especially when you first start learning them. Tangent, cotangent, you know, they're, they're all different. At least cosecant and secant, they have something to go off of. We've had all the trick functions we need to develop these. That's, what, that's kind of what I want to hint at. So, all right, let me get rid of the primal on the board. Does anyone still need that? Perfect. All right, so let's do cosecant here, and I'm going to show you my approach for how I always do it. That way, it's, it makes it easier for you, so you're not so overwhelmed by it. All right. All right, so we're going to be drawing the cosecant function. Cosecant of x. Now, how I approach this is I always think about what is it the reciprocal of? Yeah, say it. It's the reciprocal of sine. It's the reciprocal of the sine function. So, kind of like how tangent and cotangent work, they're kind of like perfect flips of each other. That's pretty much kind of the approach I'm going to take here for cosecant. But I'm going to show you how they developed it as we go. But, um, but it, just, just keep this in mind. It is the flip of sine. That's where kind of the graph is going off of. Okay, kind of going to get off your phone or it's going to be mine. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw, and this is going to seem goofy, I'm going to draw the sine function first. I'm going to draw the sine function, and I'm going to put it as a dash line because it's technically not supposed to be there. <coughs> and then I'm going to go off of that. And I'll draw a cosecant, I'll put cosecant in green. So sine goes up to 1, goes down to negative 1. You know, we have the four hash marks going across for sine. And obviously we keep going, but this is like one period length, one picture length. And what would the marker be over here? 2 pi. 2 pi. Cut in half. Cut in half again. Multiply that by 3. And then sine. And I'm, I'll put it as a dash line. Starts at zero, goes up to the first marker, comes back to zero, goes to the lowest marker, comes back to zero. Right? That's the sine function. I, again, I put it as a dash line because I don't actually want it. Cosecant is the reciprocal of all of these answers. Do you need to go down first? No. Uh, let me explain. Um, so. It's the reciprocal of all these. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off the major marks. So like, for instance, right here in the beginning, what was the sine of this value? Zero. Zero, right? So sine of whatever number that was, that was, you know, zero degrees, gave me zero, right? When you do cosecant of the same angle, you're going to get the reciprocal of this answer. So you would flip that over, right? That's zero over one. So when you flip it, what do you get? One over zero. Well, what is that? Undefined. That is not a number. You can't divide by zero. So there is an asymptote there. In fact, any time the sign actually hits the origin, like hits the zero, right, the answer is zero, you won't have an answer there. So there's actually three of them. There's three asymptotes. Because it hits zero three times. It hit it right at the beginning, hit it in the middle, hit it at the very end. Now, the other major points of interest is when when you hit the peak number here, when you hit that peak, that's like at pi over 2, it's 90 degrees, right? So what would be the sign of 90 degrees then? It's what? 1. 1. one. Oh, no, pi over 2 is 90, right? So sine of 90 is 1. Well, when you do the cosecant of 90 degrees, you're going to flip that number over, which is? 1 over 1. Still one. So cosecant is actually the same value there. And that would be the same down here. Right? When you flip negative one over, it's still negative one, right? It's negative one over one. So cosecant will have the same values there. Now, all we're gonna do is go the opposite directions. 
off of this. This is how I do it. So if sine goes down around this coordinate, because that's the one that they both share, if sine goes down, cosecant will do the complete flip of that. So instead of going down around this coordinate, what is it going to do? It's going to go up. And it can't cross the asymptotes. Now over here, sine goes up, so cosecant would go down. That's your picture. That's crazy. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. You draw a sign, you go the opposite directions. That's my approach for doing it. It's okay. different than the book we'll show you. Or I have a question. When we're drawing that after we're going to want us to erase sign. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So that's why I put them as a really fainted line. Uh, like like if I use a pencil, you can barely see sign. Okay. Because I always like to figure out where the peaks and valleys are. I draw my asymptotes in there and then boom, I go the opposite directions. So I instantly know what cosecant looks like every time. That's it. You're looking at the picture it's right there. That's one picture length of cosecant. Now, obviously, to like tomorrow, we'll mess with like when I put numbers in here. Like put a number in front, of, like I am two, or put a number in here. All it's going to do is it's just going to it's going to affect you know where these points are, but they're going to go basically the same direction. Okay. Any questions with uh, cosecant? Okay, I'm going to stop there. That's the last one. I just want to introduce it today to show you how easy it is to draw if you follow kind of my rule for you. Yes. Again, the book will show you something completely well, different. I mean, Fred, did you check these? Um, yeah. 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 Yeah.